So in an effort to do more vlog style content and to use my vlog setup here that I have, my Sony EV10, my little wide angle zoom here, my little Joby tripod, uh, to take you guys more into my life, something intimate. I'm going to take you along the ride while I make my morning oatmeal. That's, I'm not going to talk about oatmeal today, but I'm going to talk about this while I'm making my oatmeal. Uh, today I want to talk about why all you photographers out there starting a business or considering starting a photography business, or even veterans and old timers like myself, why you should consider switching your energy away from Instagram and towards YouTube, how that can reach more people, and how that can help you with an extra revenue stream, and just overall help your photography business. So if you wanna learn why, this is the episode for you. If you wanna learn how, I will do a follow-up episode coming soon. So let's talk photography. <laughs> my bland healthy oatmeal this won't be a bland episode and no I'm not gonna do like the thing while I'm eating and talking to you I'm not gonna eat this whole thing wouldn't that be gross I thought it'd be fun to tease you guys all right let's get into it like I said today I'm gonna talk about why you should be considering YouTube for your photography business this isn't like a I ditched Instagram forever video I haven't I still use Instagram for some things I just use it a lot less and I use it in a very different way. So the way I'm using Instagram these days is basically to help promote and to help drive traffic to my YouTube channel. I also use it to connect with people, but in the past I used it to really, you know, help promote my photography business, help promote me as a photographer, and to help promote and raise awareness for the stories that I was working on. And for the last couple of years, it's just kind of sucked at that. I mean, I haven't seen growth on my Instagram account in like three years and I post every single day. I've seen the reach and I've seen the engagement just drop off significantly and I've never bought followers or anything like that so that's not why I'm not seeing growth. Um, I'll see like every once in a while I'll get some traction, I'll get a bunch of new followers but then it just offsets. I do get bots but I do like a bot purge every few months and I just never get anywhere. I've stayed at this exact number for like several years and I've also even had some like big chances to gain followers. Like I had one of my images shared on Leica's global account which has over a million followers and I think I got like five followers out of that. Years ago that would have been like hundreds if not thousands. Even the New York Times, uh, if they tag me in a photo I've done on assignment, years ago I'd get hundreds minimum like per day for a couple days and then it would drop off. Now, honestly, I'll get like four or five and that's it. So because of that lack of engagement, that lack of reach, and it's not all about total followers, but I just wasn't getting any traction anywhere with anything. I wasn't seeing it lead to more business or any opportunities financially for me or even just raising awareness and having people act. I just found people didn't want to engage, just like zombies liking things and moving on. So it forced me to look elsewhere and I started to look towards YouTube and I started watching more YouTube videos and I started thinking like, Oh, how could I apply this to my business and what I'm doing? And granted, at the time, I had more free time because it was COVID and I was in lockdown. So that was kind of the perfect time to start my YouTube channel and to really build things up. And I understand it can be intimidating in the beginning, but it wasn't as hard as you think. And it does take time, but you don't need like a huge, massive growth to have an impact on your business. You don't need to like get to like hundreds of thousands of followers. I have a measly... 11,000 approaching 12,000 but the key is is that they're a great audience they're an engaged audience we get to know each other we connect more we're building a community and so for me the why about YouTube has turned into sort of threefold let's start with the money side that's important for a lot of people out there any business obviously it's really important so we start with money right you're gonna say like well don't I need like hundreds of thousands of dollars to make any money at all from advertising and things like that like sure you do I think my channel generates I have almost 12,000 subscribers, and I probably generate a few hundred dollars a month in ad revenue, and then through affiliate links, maybe like another hundred or two hundred dollars, depending on the month. But there's so many other ways to generate income. Like I said, with my online classes, I have a monthly mentorship program where people learn one-on-one -on -one from me and have unlimited access for the entire month. We have weekly meetings, weekly assignments, and then offline work and offline editing, and then access to me via WhatsApp as well. So that is a great revenue stream for me. Again, it's also a great way for me to promote my workshops because people are watching my free videos and they're getting to know me and getting to know me, they're getting to trust me. And it does take trust, man. If someone's gonna fly halfway around the world and spend their limited vacation time on a workshop and spend all that money it costs to fly to somewhere like Vietnam, 
They need to trust you and need to know you. And that's not gonna come from Instagram. That's gonna come from things like this, from people watching your video, from people sitting down and listening to you talk for 10, 15 minutes about a topic and something that they can learn from and understand that you like to eat oatmeal and things like that. So I do a variety of free content and that feeds into my educational stuff. But I've also got my membership program as well. So that's $4.99 a month and that's bonus content. So that's weekly live streams. Again, more teaching. It's priority comments. There's a whole bunch of perks. I'm not here to sell you on that today, but if you do wanna check it out, you can hit the join button below. But there's a lot of perks on there. Check that out. But that's another revenue stream for me. And now for all of you out there, it could be many different things. Not everyone can commit to a weekly live stream or even weekly videos. So you start off slow, you see what works for you. But again, this has turned into quite a significant revenue stream for me in addition to my other businesses. This isn't my main business, but Again, this is good for now, and then also later on, this will give me freedom. If I wanna go live somewhere else, or I wanna take a little bit of time away from my actual business, but still have enough money for expenses getting by, or later in life, you know, I'm 44, maybe 10, 15 years from now, I wanna ease into like less physical shooting and more stuff like this, this is a great opportunity. I've, I've built this audience up, I have a community, so if I have a book to sell, an exhibition to sell, or more educational classes to sell, I've got this community that I've built up through the years. So that's the money side, but that's not it for me. There's more to it as well. The awareness side is important. Before with my photography, I used to put it on Instagram and people would engage and ask questions and private messages and things like that. And it was more likely to turn into actionable things like donations, or again, like I said, inspiring other photographers to do stories themselves. You know, nowadays with people clicking through, people wanting to just watch like mindless videos, people with the TikTok mind kind of set, then it's not so impactful, I've noticed that. But YouTube is completely different. Again, people sitting there watching me for 10, 15 minutes. If I have a personal project, a story I want to put out there, and I talk over the images, or you know, like coming soon, I've got a documentary that I filmed about the Northern White Rhinos, I can put that out to my audience. You can learn more, you can donate. There's all sorts of ways to raise awareness. And again, I've done so with a more intimate audience, an audience that cares about me more and knows me better and is more likely to have an impact. So for you guys out there that are doing personal work, documentary work, you have stories that you wanna share with the masses, this is a great way to do it through YouTube. And number three is kind of like a two for one, so maybe it's three and four, but I call this sort of marketing and education. The educational side for me, this is something I love. I absolutely love teaching, and this has brought me back to teaching. I can teach here on my terms. Teaching to the masses and doing these educational shows like this, helping people learn photography, helping people build their photography business, helping people learn about gear and things like that. And I've absolutely loved it. It's been so much fun educating. And then marketing, through these videos marketing my other stuff, right? While I'm on here, I'm trying not to do it a ton. I probably overdid it in the beginning and I apologize for that. And maybe even this episode, I'm doing it too much, sorry. But it kind of ties in, so it makes sense. But marketing my other products, marketing the things that I wanna sell, my one-on-one -on -one classes to people through these videos, it's free marketing for me. And I've built this audience up. Again, all this takes time and takes patience, but if you stick with it, again, you put your energy here instead of Instagram, it pays off. And so that's what works for me and what I'm trying to achieve, but the possibilities are endless. So there's so many different things that all sorts of different photographers working in different genres can do. If you're a wedding photographer, you can do YouTube videos where you're teaching bride and grooms how to pose or what to look for in a photographer, or just interviews about yourself so potential clients get to know you. That's a big thing with wedding photography. They wanna see you, they wanna trust you. Or hiring people over the phone or online or even through referral, but they never really met you and don't get to know you. If you do destination wedding photography, it's hard to get to know people, but through your YouTube channel, they can get to know you. Or you can do BTS videos so people can see how you shoot, or even just talking people through what to expect from a wedding photographer from a shoot, how the whole process works. You know, giving out that free education, letting them into your world, having them get to know you, this can all just translate into sales for your photography business. Take a commercial photographer, right? You have a photo studio, take people along with you on the ride. You know, film a little bit of BTS, show your work, talk about your work, talk about who you are and share your passion. No one's watching this stuff on Instagram in a minute. I use Instagram to tease these things, so that's important to mention. I use that to tease my episodes on YouTube, but the long form stuff, the more they get to know you, the more they can learn about you and your process through your YouTube channel, the better. And the more likely that's going to turn into a sale for you. So there's so many different ways out there to use YouTube to help your photography business and to generate sales for your photography business. And if you're just starting out right now, this should be an integral part of your plan. Use this as your marketing plan. Use this in your business strategy. And if you're an older, salty veteran photographer like me and you're intimidated by this stuff, 
it shouldn't be that intimidating. You know, you know the stuff already. You probably have most of the equipment already. You know, maybe you got to learn editing, that kind of stuff. But you probably have a lot to put out there. You probably have a lot to teach people. You've learned some things through the years. So put that out there. And then for a lot of you too, at some point, you're not going to want to shoot anymore. Maybe you can't physically shoot anymore, but you might still want to work. You might still want to make money. And this is a great way to do it. Maybe you're just doing a couple workshops a year. Maybe you're doing one-on-one -on -one classes like I do. Again, there's so many different possibilities, but I found for Instagram itself, it's great for entertainment, but for YouTube, it's turned into getting to know people, building a community, building a relationship with people, and then people are more likely to buy what I'm selling, basically, you know, because there's some trust, because they get to know me a bit. So that's the important thing. Focus on this stuff now. If it is intimidating to you, don't worry. You know, it was intimidating to me when I got started as well, but I got through it. I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'm some sort of expert again. I don't have the hundreds of thousands of followers, but there are some useful tools out there. I will do a full episode on the how and teach you some of the things that I've learned about equipment, about the whole process and to building my YouTube channel from zero to almost 12,000 followers. Again, I know that's not crazy impressive and my content will be more targeted towards photographers that wanna do this, but there's great resources on YouTube already. Think Media, they're a bunch of young people. I sound like an old man, like get off my lawn. They're a bunch of young people that do a lot of great tutorials for content creators. I've learned a lot from those youngsters on there, so check those guys out. That's not any way affiliated with me, but I've learned a lot from them. Check them out. There's plenty of great YouTube channels that help you focus on learning about all that stuff about starting a YouTube channel. Again, I'll have my episode on the how soon, so make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Make sure you gently tap the like button. You don't need to smash it like some of those people always do it. Smash the like button right now. But also hit the notifications button too because you'll find out when my new videos are coming out. I do typically have multiple videos per week, but at least one video a week. Anyway, guys, I hope you learned something today. I hope you're considering YouTube. I hope you're considering shifting your energy away from Instagram and towards YouTube. Trust me, it'll be much more better beneficial to your photography business. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to have a wonderful day.